faith out and receive your miracle? Will you stretch your faith out and receive your miracle? Say, I receive it now in Jesus' name. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you've made. We're going to continue to rejoice and be glad in it. It's come time for us to hear your word. We declare our hearts good ground to receive that word. I pray for everyone that's in this facility right now. I pray for everyone watching online. And God, we are so grateful for our online members and partners and friends, those who are just watching online. I thank you for keeping us protected. I thank you for your peace prevailing in our homes. Now, I thank you for giving us ears to hear and a heart to understand. I thank you for anointing me to teach. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Let everybody say amen. Come on, give the Lord a real big hand clap. Let's thank God for our music ministry. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you will testify to somebody and say, my miracle is happening any day now. Just so that we're clear, if you didn't confess to somebody, you got to remain standing for the rest of the service. Cause... <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you so much, Music Ministry. You guys are awesome. Give them another hand clap. Give them another hand clap. This is the year of miracles. And, and we've been getting testimonies every week of God performing miracles in people's lives. Healing miracles, deliverance miracles, finance miracles, family relationship miracles. They're coming in all ways and all sizes. And God is not a respecter of persons. What he's done for one, he will do for another. So I believe you're in your miracle season. You're in your miracle chapter. Things are going to happen for you that you could only explain that it was God that did it. My education didn't do it. My training didn't do it. Where I lived didn't do it. My skin color didn't do it. No, this was the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous. It's a miracle that it happened. I, they, they told me this shouldn't happen to people like me, but it happened anyway. It's a miracle. So, so you're in line for your miracle, and it's going to happen any day now. Say any day now. If you've been with us uh, uh, for the last couple of weeks, you know, Pastor T uh, taught, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, you talked about the temptation, the test, and the traps. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Temptation, the test, and the traps. And last week, I, I was teaching on uh, the trickster and the blessing, how the devil wants to trick us out of the blessing. And, and one scripture that seems like we've been uh, uh, proclaiming and teaching and digging into over the past few months is the one found in Luke chapter number 21. I believe it's verse number 26 where it talks about how men's hearts will fail them because of what's coming on the earth. You heard Pastor T mention it earlier and, and there it is on the screen. Men's hearts failing them for, for fear and for looking after the things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And so we see that happening right now where people uh, are being shaken, where people's hearts, the core of their being is being rattled, it's being shaken, and people are turning away from what they once believed. Uh, um, uh, we're, we're in a season now, uh, a season where it seems like violence has taken over the land. And, and in this season of violence, we as believers, we, we need to get closer to God more than we've ever been. I, I, I'm sorry. Let me, let me just start this from the beginning. Let me say this from the onset. Pastor has not changed his mind concerning prosperity. Okay? I believe in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he's, that Jesus came so that you could have life and you could have it more abundantly. I believe that's the will of God for you in every area of your life, in every chapter of your life, in every season of your life, I believe that's God's will for you. But a part of living the abundant life is that in this season that we're in where it seems like violence has taken over the land, we must stay close to God more than ever before. 
we don't have a choice. We need God's protection on our lives. We need God's protection on our children. We need God's protection on our family. If God doesn't protect us, we don't have protection. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord encamps around about those who fear him. That word fear does not mean you're scared of God. It simply means you reverence God. That's a promise you need to hold on to. That's something you need to declare over your whole house every single day. That because I reverence God, God has angelic protection over my life. God has angelic protection over my family. God has pro angelic protection over my stuff. Can you say amen to that? But everything that we're seeing, everything that we're seeing, we're seeing that Jesus is soon to come. I know some of y'all, <laughs> I, I can see the look on your face. Oh, Jesus. Pastor, can you tell me how soon? Because I got some stuff planned that I need to get done. And how, how soon, Pastor? If you tell me how soon, I'm, I'll make sure I'm right with God before he come. Jesus said, no man knows the day. In order out, you need to stay. You can't get ready. You need to stay ready. You need to stay ready. The Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. And this season, it's, it's getting close. It's getting close. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm not going to be before you long. I promise. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 1. I'm going to read 1 through verse 3, and then I'm going to go over to the Amplified so that we get a little more clarity. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the, com by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Let me read that out of the Amplified. Now in regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together to meet him. Now, I think that's important because Paul says to the church at Thessalonica that when he comes, we all going to gather together to meet him. So he's not referring to, and I'm getting a little theological here, he's not referring to the second coming of Jesus where his feet will touch the ground. He's actually referring to the rapture that when Jesus comes and descends in the cloud and we're captured together to meet up with him. Y'all understand? Y'all understand those are two separate events that will take place. And the rapture will take place before he comes back with us. When he comes, he's coming to get us then when he comes for his feet on the ground, he's coming back with us. He's bringing us back with us, with him. Y'all understand that? That's why you got to be ready because you could be driving down the highway and it could be rapture time. Or you could be sleeping in your bed and it could be rapture time. Or you could be on your job and it could be rapture time. You could be in school. And you're on the computer doing your schoolwork. And all of a sudden, teacher gone. Some kids gone. Some are left. Now, if that ever happened and you left, pray. 
I don't want you to be left. That's why I'm teaching you today. Y'all understand? And this is not to get you in the fear. This is so that you could be prepared. Pastor T told us earlier, if you're prepared, there's no need to be in fear. That event could happen at any day now. Any day. All scriptures of prophecy concerning the rapture have been fulfilled. So it could be just like the miracles any day now. He could come any day now. So when that takes place, look what he says here. He says, now in regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to meet him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly unsettled or alarmed either by a so-called prophetic revelation of a spirit or a message or a letter alleged to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has already come. So he's letting them know, look, that hasn't happened yet. So, so if somebody says, oh, he's already come, you can say, no, not yet. If you know you saved, if you know you born again and you still here, it hasn't happened yet. Now, if you're not sure, you can be sure today. You don't have to leave here in that state. Uh, now look, verse 3, let no one in any way deceive or entrap you. Catch this. For that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. What's the apostasy? That's what the King James calls the falling away. That is the great rebellion of the abandonment of the faith by professed Christians. So he's saying here that right before Jesus comes back, right before we gather together to meet him in the air, that there's going to be a falling away, that professed Christians will leave the faith. So that answers a lot of questions of what's happening in the body of Christ today how people have fallen away. <laughs> uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's going to be a falling away, but I won't be a part of it. I... Yeah, you need to turn to somebody else and say, I'm not participating in the falling away, in the falling. In the Old Testament, God had to deal with his people falling away, but he didn't call it falling away. It, it, when you get home, I'm going to give you some homework. Uh, I'm going to give you some homework. Everybody should have a Bible, a, a real Bible at home. Everybody should have a concordance. Not getting too many amens, but that's okay. And I want you to look up the word backsliding. Some of y'all that came from holiness churches, Pentecostal churches, even mainline denominational churches, you know what backsliding is. Backsliding is when the children of Israel turn themselves away from the true and living God. And let me tell you something. We, see, see in, in the church that we got saved in, we used to talk about backsliding a lot because we saw folk backslide. They come to church, they get saved, they get born again, get filled with the Holy Ghost. They're on fire for God. They're on their way to heaven, enjoying their trip. That was the testimony, you know. You remember testimony time? Somebody would pop up. I got a testimony, saints. Giving honor to God who's head of my life. Giving honor to my pastor, my overseer. Giving honor to the ministers. Deacons, deaconess, all, and everybody in their respectable places. And then we had to stop testimony service because right after they gave honor to God and everybody, then they say, saints, the devil been busy. <laughs> Come on now, you done gave honor to God. Don't, don't talk about the devil now. But we would have testimony service. And people would get up, testify. And then a few months later, same folk that would beat you to church, you couldn't find them. Pray for them, they're in a backslidden condition. They backslide. But let me tell you something about backsliding. Backsliding doesn't happen in one event. It, 
doesn't happen one day. You, you don't just decide one day, that's it. No, 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 no. The devil works on you over time. He starts planting little seeds in your mind. You pray for this. You didn't get it, did you? God don't love you. The person sitting next to you don't love you. They hate you. They want to be like you. You should move your seat. Sit a little bit further in the back. It's cooler back there. The air condition works. <laughs> and then maybe you fall into sin and you come to church and look like everybody know you sin. And you looking at them and they looking at you and nobody don't know you sin but you and God. But the devil telling you everybody know what you just did last night. How you had Freddie over your house. <laughs> or Lucy. <laughs> or Lucy and Fred. <laughs> Gotta say that these days. Everybody know you cheated on your taxes. How you get all that money back if you only got one child? up there claiming the goldfish as a dependent. <laughs> and and it, seems like, it seems like when you do something wrong, the devil begins to work on your mind. Why? Because the Bible says he is the accuser of the brother. His job is to accuse you of stuff. Even after you've repented of it and God has forgiven you of it and God doesn't remember it, but he still reminds you all to work on your mind to get you to backslide. See, backsliding is a process. When you once were on fire for God, you would wake up every morning, you would read your Bible, you would pray, you would make sure you did your confessions, you did everything. And all of a sudden, one day, you break the habit. Then the next day, you break the habit. And then the next day, you break, and then you, oh, I forgot. Well, I'll make up later. You know, like on Wednesday when you miss World Up Wednesday and you say you're going to watch it later and then I call you and you ain't watched it yet? I'm talking to somebody specific. They know who they are. If they don't say anything, they got the message. But y'all know how it is. Come on, come on, come on. Be real with me. Be real with me, right? You wake up one morning, you start rushing, you can't get through your regular routine. You say you're going to catch up later, but later never comes. And then he tell you, it's okay, God know your heart. And it's a process of backsliding, process. And so we have to get back to our first love. Because it doesn't happen overnight. And so your love and your passion for God, and your love and your passion for the things of God begins to dwindle. And you begin to turn away. All to lead you to one day where you make the decision, I ain't going to church no more. I ain't, church don't do nothing for me. Oh, now you done bought into that lie. That church does nothing for you. Yet, when you were in trouble, who prayed for you? Who, 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 who sent somebody to the hospital to lay hands on you? Was it the devil? Did you call Club Live when you got in trouble? No. No. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. See, a lot of times we go through things and we think this is just a social event. An impartation is taking place right now as I'm teaching you. Because we're turning our hearts solely for God. We're getting too close. Listen, I'm just going to tell you, I'm the pastor, I can say this, so I, I, don't, care what nobody, I don't care what nobody say. Some of y'all ain't caught it yet, you'll get the revelation a little bit later. Things are happening now that lets me know we're so close to the return of Jesus Christ. And we cannot fall away. We cannot fall away. Listen, 
One of, the, one of the signs that Jesus is soon to return is that there's going to be the emergence of the mark of the beast. All right, if you don't say amen good enough, I'm going to come down right to your section and talk right to you. The mark of the beast. How many heard of the mark of the beast before? If you heard of the mark of the beast, raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, good. If you know what the mark of the beast is concerning uh, that's recorded in scripture, tell me what it is. Wait, 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 wait. Some, some of y'all are a little uh, unsure. How many have heard of the mark of the beast? Okay, that's a lot of hands. Good. How many know, okay, now let me try this. How many know what the mark of the beast is as recorded in scripture? What that mark is? Okay, what, what, what do you know? What have you been taught it is? Say it. Come on, come on, come on. What it is? So when you go to the grocery store and, and your bill is something and they give you $6.66 back, you tell them, look, girl, I'm going to give you an extra penny because I don't want that 666 because that's the mark of the beast. Come on, right? I went, I went to the drive-thru the other day and they told me your bill is 666. I said, no, it's not. It's 667. <laughs> but y'all understand, right? That's what the Bible says, 666. But, but the mark of the beast, one sign of the mark of the beast is that this, this beast, this antichrist who rises up will gather all of the countries in the world to a one government, actually one economic system. And that one economic system, if you don't accept the mark, if you don't have, if you're not in on the system, then you cannot buy and sell. So you will be prevented from legally purchasing anything, good or service, unless you're in on the system. So this is already being established around the world today. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? That, that's just a sign. That's not a time to get scared. That's a time to say, oh, there's another one, another sign that Jesus is soon to return. So I'm making a decision. I'm not going to fall away. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to preach from this pulpit and tell people to get saved, get born again, live for God, and then go to hell myself. Nope, that ain't going to happen. I'm going to make sure I'm getting closer to God. Ain't no way I'm going to come to Cornerstone, the best church in the whole wide world, where we don't break down, we break through. And I confess that, and I say this is my year of miracles, and it could happen any day now and then I go to hell no I'm, that's not going to happen I'm not falling away Amen. there's coming a time and matter of fact it's happening now where anything and everything will be accepted in the church of the living God that's a sign of the falling away where there are churches that are now teaching that sin is okay You said it, the devil is alive. Where you'll see unholy and ungodly acts on the platform. But this is just a sign. So when you see it, it's not for you to get unsettled. Like the scripture says, don't be soon shaken in your mind when you see these things happening. No, you just know this is a sign of the times. That means I need to get closer to God. You know, I'm not responsible for anybody else making it into heaven but me. You need to make it personal that you are not responsible for it. Now, parents, you want to teach and train your children up in the way that they should go. I think I said that last week. Train your children up in the way they should. Don't let them go in the way they want to go. Train them up in the way they should. Let me say it again. Don't let them go in the way they want to go. Train them up in the way they should go. You know what's right from wrong. You've been down the road. Matter of fact, you went down the pit yourself. So stop them from falling in the pit. Can you say amen to that? This day is soon to come. 
But we cannot fall away. And, and, and there are going to be some things that are happening that, 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 that people are going to turn away from the body of Christ. They're going to turn away from the word. And, and they're, going to turn, they're going to turn away from principles in the word. Now, some people are going to fall away, but they're going to come to church every Sunday. I feel a little Baptist now. Let everybody say amen. amen. You know the devil is at work when he could try to trick you out of the blessing God already has in store for you. Galatians chapter, and I, I think I'm just about ready to close. Y'all got it. Y'all did good today. Y'all did real good. Ooh, give yourselves a hand. Nudge your neighbor, say, neighbor, I listened real well today. I listened. Pastor didn't have to get too excited. I listened real well. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9. We quote this all the time. Matter of fact, uh, go to verse 7. Go to verse 7 for me. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7. Look what it says here. It says, be not deceived, right? God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. All right, so if you sow, if you sow love, you should expect to reap love. If you sow joy, you should expect to reap joy. If you sow finances into the kingdom of God, you should expect to reap finances. Right? Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Verse number eight, and then he makes it clear. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So if you sow to your carnal nature, your carnal nature is going to produce a harvest for you but it's going to be corruption. Hey, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall reap of the Spirit life everlasting. Then he says this, and this is where we need to be. And let us not be weary in world doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Remember this verse, because this is where the devil wants to trick believers. He wants to trick you into getting weary before you reap. Getting weary before you see the manifestation of your harvest. He wants you to get tired. <laughs> and you need to understand you could wear him out. Because you've been strengthened by the Lord. Say, so I could wear him out. I could wear him. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm going to wear him out. I'm going to wear him out. You need, to make, you, need to make, you need to make this commitment that you're going to make the devil regret from ever trying to attack you, ever trying to deceive you, ever trying to trick you. You're going to make him regret he ever came your way, that you're going to stand for God, that you're going to reap all your harvest, that you're going to see victory every day of your life, that you're going to have miracle after miracle after miracle, and you're not running away from God. You're not running away from the Word. You're not running away from church. No, you're running to God. You're running to the Word. You're running to your church family because you're going to make the devil regret he ever brought your name out his mouth. Y'all know how you used to say when you was in high school, don't you, don't, don't you say my name. Don't you bring your name, my name out your mouth. You know when you was ready to fight? And they tell you something, and then, and then, woo, you know these fighting words. I'm going to tell you fighting words. Your mama. You know, you play in the dozens, and then somebody say, your mama, don't you talk about my mama. That's the way you need to be with the devil. Don't you talk about my Jesus. Don't you talk about my word. Don't you talk about how I'm standing for God. Don't you talk about my church. Don't you talk about my pastor. I will fight you. See, it's a standard. I'm like that with Pastor. Don't you talk about Pastor T. I know I'm the pastor and all. Don't you talk about her. I say, don't you let me catch you talking about her. I say, don't you talk about her. Because I ain't going to have to catch you. I'll find out. Sometimes 
I'm up around people and God show me what they've been praying for. I don't tell you. I just keep on moving because I don't want to get in trouble. What am I saying? If you really love it, you'll fight for it. Say amen to that. If you really love your relationship with God, you will fight for it. That means, that means you're going to be tempted in some areas. All I'm telling you is don't give up the fight. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. If you fall, get up. Come back to church with your head held up, with your arms raised, praising God, and you keep trying. Because you haven't lost because you're still in the fight. That was just one round. That does, that's not the whole, one round is not the whole fight. And let me say this too, and then I'm going to close. When you see people have fallen, if you can't help them, don't talk about them. The Bible says, if you see a brother or a sister overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual, not y'all carnal ones, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness lest the same thing come on you. This is good teaching today. This is, this is good teaching today. The trickster is trying to trick believers out of the blessing. And he's trying to trick some out of following the principles in the word of God concerning sowing and reaping. In Mark chapter 14, I think I'll just, I'll just, I said I was going to close with the last one, but y'all convinced me to keep going. Thank y'all so much. The preacher ain't blaming the preacher. He's blaming the people. Mark chapter 14, you need to see this and then this is it. And being in Bethany, uh, verse number three, I'm sorry, I didn't tell y'all. Mark 14, verse three. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves, said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Woo! And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She have wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always. And whensoever you will, you may do good to them. But you, me, ye have not always. She's done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Ah. You, you got to catch this. Here is this, in this particular gospel of Mark, an unnamed woman, we, we know her name is Mary, unnamed woman, she comes to Jesus and she knows it's about time for him to be crucified and he's going to be buried. And so she does not wait for that time to come she brings the most expensive thing that she has. She takes the alabaster box, which has the ointment of spikenard in it, which was extremely expensive in that day. And she does not open, catch this, she does not open the box, take a Q-tip, dip it in the spikenard, the ointment, and put a little bit on Jesus and say, yeah, that's enough. She says, he's been so good to me. He is actually going to the cross for me. He is going to die for me. He is going to pay my penalty 
for my sin. I am not going to dab a little bit. I'm going to go up to him and break the whole box all over him. I'm going to give him what's already due to him. He's not due a little offering. Yeah, the amens went down right there. That's okay. He's been so good, I got to give him all I can. Even to the point where others around me say, she's giving too much. I don't care about the haters. Because they weren't there when he saved me. They weren't there. You weren't there when he healed my body. You weren't there when he brought me out of the muck and miry clay. You weren't there when he healed my wife's body. You weren't there when I didn't know how this church was going to get its bills paid. And he sent somebody from California to send a check of $50,000. You weren't there when God answered prayers that I prayed to him and nobody else knew about it and he met the need. You weren't there. So I'm not going to give him a little bit. I'm going to give him everything I can. I'm going to give him all I got. I, I, yeah, all I am and ever hope to be God, I'm going to give, I'm going to surrender it all to you. That's what this woman was saying. She was saying, I'm going to give him everything. And I don't care about what others say. It doesn't matter. He did it for me. If you can't say he did it for you, I can say he did it for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I will not be tricked out of the blessing. I will not get weary in well-doing. Because in due season, and just so that you know, my season is due. In due season, I'm going to reap because I will not faint. Come. Come on, give God a praise. And if y'all could just continuously play the music to the song any day now, glory to God. God is so good. Come on, give God a shout for that. Amen. We're not turning back off on God. Amen. We're going to push forward. Because look at somebody behind you, around you, and say, there's a season due you. Come on now.